everybody, Punisher88 here, coming at you once again with another Thursday review. So today I'm reviewing James Bond 007, issue number one. So, to those of you who watch my reviews, you guys know that I like to start with the cover first, so let's check it out. Now, right off the bat, no, I do not love this cover. I know, shocker, right? Here's why. So to those of you watching, you guys know how much I love a simple comic book cover, right? I mean, I've said it time and time again, and I've also mentioned how much I dig simplicity. Well, there comes a time when even I have to draw the line at what simple looks cool and what simple just looks too darn simple. And I'm sorry, folks, but as much as I love James Bond, this cover right here to me just looks too darn simple. I mean, come on. It's James Bond. I mean, Throw an explosion or something on there, you know, really liven it up. Don't go with a all-white background and then draw in some gray buildings. I mean, come on, it's boring. And uh, as negative as I know I sound right now, I do have a positive for this cover, and it's this right here. Because let's face it, when we think of James Bond, we think of the girls. The cool cars, the awesome action sequences, which nine times out of ten feature a cool explosion, or a good old-fashioned James Bond beatdown. And what I see here looks like the remnants of a good old-fashioned James Bond beatdown. I mean, he's walking away all cool, and he's leaving the bad guy in a pool of his own blood. So, I'll give this cover that, but everything else... I'm sorry, I, I can't, man, and uh, I think this is the first time in a very long time where I gotta say uh, this cover is even too simple for me. Now, with all that being said, from the cover alone, do I think this book's batting a thousand? Strangely enough, yes, I do, and here's why. I'm looking at this cover from a more mysterious point of view. And when I say mysterious, I say it because it's James Bond. I mean, we all know that James Bond is a super, super cool character. But we also know that James Bond is a very mysterious character. And uh, I think that's the angle that the creative team was going with here. They're They're giving this awesome, mysterious character's first issue, such a bare-bones cover, to really play with the reader's head, you know? They really want to enforce that high dose of mystery. So that's why I'm thinking this book has such a bare-bones cover. And if that's the case, well, yeah, I, I think this book is batting a thousand from the cover alone. So, But that's just the cover. Now it's time to get down to what I like to call the nitty gritty. But before we do, I just want to take the time to mention to any new viewers out there or any new subscribers to my channel that if at any time during this review or any of my past reviews, you guys notice that I look up and down at the camera quite a bit or it sounds like I'm reading to you guys, the reason for that is I keep my notes in front of me. Why? Well, there's a couple reasons. The first one being, with the notes, I find it helps the review flow a lot smoother. Second, with the notes in front of me, let's say I'm reading part of the review and I get stuck. I can backtrack and then keep going. And third, well basically when it comes to memorizing text, it has never been one of my strong suits. So therefore, the notes are actually a help aid. So if you guys are cool with that, awesome. We'll get through this review and we'll be on our merry way. Sound cool? All right, so what do you say we get started? So, why does this comic book matter? Well, it's called James Bond, who is one of the most popular characters in modern times. I mean, the guy has more movies than there are martini combinations, and he's most definitely the most famous agent, secret or not, in history. Hands down. <laughs> Uh, this is a very measured and well-paced first issue by Warren Ellis, the ever-so-talented Warren Ellis. Uh, the man opens on an exciting scene where 
We don't know who the characters are, where James Bond even is, and what the deal is about. Uh, Bond even fights in a very unconventional way, and the mission, if it even is a mission, doesn't seem very Bond-like. Uh, there are no sexy women, no uh, interesting locales or super cool gadgets. This is James Bond in a brutal and honest kill-or-be-killed mission. And I think it's awesome. Uh, the remaining issue sets up the characters, perfectly captures James's charm, and reminds us who Money Penny is and of the sexual tension between them. In a scant six uh, six panels, Warren Ellis shows us two characters who respect one another but also like each other. It's done in a very cool way. Uh, something that most critics might not notice is how Ellis is clearly showing us a version of James Bond who is an employee. Unlike the movies where, you know, he can run off and disappear for months on end, uh, this James Bond has to do or has to abide by rules, follow orders, and basically just sit down and shut up. <laughs> Uh, in, or, uh, in another very well-paced scene, uh, we see how Bond, as carefree and reckless as he usually is, still needs to be quiet and listen. Something James Bond fans might not be used to. <laughs> be used to seeing, I mean. <laughs> uh, Ellis is effectively setting up a boss who doesn't care for Bond's fun and carefree nature and clearly wants an agent who will do their job effectively and quickly uh sorry efficiently and quickly <laughs> uh this james bond is having fun sure but he's not the broken down and deeply emotional version we've seen portrayed by daniel craig uh I'll be honest, I'm a little unfamiliar with uh, artist Jason Masters' work, but I like it. Uh, it actually reminds me of the more clean work seen in the classic comic strip. Uh, the offices Bond walks through are simple and even boring, uh, which helps sell the job aspect Ellis is going for. Uh, even the gadget shop looks really cold and rather boring in its in its own way, and we're clearly seeing a more architectural look of the scenes. Uh, Bond looks good too. I mean, it's a given. He's James Bond, uh, but he's much more akin to the George Lazenby James Bond. And trust me, I never thought in a million years I would be referencing. George Lazenby's James Bond <laughs> uh, than, you know, Daniel Craig or Sean Connery. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, he's got the black, slick back hair and chiseled jaw. And uh, some might say he looks a bit too much like Archer. But he has a very wry sense of suaveness Archer will never have. <laughs> Plus, Masters can draw a series, a serious action sequence proven in the opening pages. This book, I think, is in great hands. Uh, the narcotic storyline, I thought, didn't quite fit uh, as cleanly as it should have. Uh, it's a storyline that's building for James in the next issue, which I have, but I still haven't read yet, so no spoilers to those of you who've been reading this series. <laughs> um, and it feels oddly stuffed in here with no real purpose. And it's hard to care about it even if it's only a, you know, blip to be seen more of later. Uh, an original James Bond who's having a bit more fun, a new direction, and an honest feel that's exciting, and it's nice to see it's not trying to be like the movies, it's its own beast playing by its own rules, and it's great. 
So, uh, pros and cons for this issue. The pros highly outweigh the cons. Uh, my first pro is uh, great pace to this intro issue with a fantastic action sequence to start off. Uh, my second pro is Bond and his supporting characters are very strong and genuine. Uh, my third pro is looks great. <laughs> Uh, my fourth uh, pro is doesn't follow the current movies, so readers can really just dive right in if they feel like it, and that's awesome when any story is like that. And my last pro is it's very reminiscent of the classic comic strip. And my only con I have is the drug storyline I thought feels a bit stuck in there, uh, to serve the next issue more than anything. But even though we got one con and me ranting about the cover of this book, uh, if I had to give it an overall score, I would give it a solid 9.5. So there you go, folks. There's your Thursday comic review. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give her a thumbs up. If not, give her a thumbs down. And if you enjoy reviews like this one, take a look around my channel. I got plenty of them. And uh, if you really dig comic reviews, well, I do a new one every Thursday and Saturday. Thursday being a current comic, and Saturday being one of either a back issue book, a hot topic book, or something that just really catches my eye. Uh, if you're into unboxings, well, as you guys know, I am a member of the Marvel Collector Corps, and normally I do a new unboxing every two months. But we all know what happened. I'm not going to go over it because I feel like I'm just cramming it down your throat now about telling you about what happened with my subscription. So I'm not going there. And um, also, if you're into um, backstories on lame comic book characters, uh, every Wednesday I choose a new character at random and I give you guys the dirt on them. Basically, who created the character, when they made their first appearance, yada 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 and I'm thinking if any of you would like to uh, suggest a lame superhero or supervillain that would be awesome and I suggest you comment on um, my newest lame super villain of the week uh, which I did the other day so go comment there if you have any suggestions for a lame villain or hero I would love to hear them and uh, what I'll do is at the end of the week I'll pull everything you know all the suggestions together and uh, I'll do like what I usually do when I pick a character uh, I, t I write a couple down and I do my eeny meeny miny mo and uh, who knows maybe your suggestion will be the winning one so uh, yeah so there's that and then of course if you're into comic book hauls and whatnot I have plenty of those too and if you're into reaction type videos, well, I have my Thoughts and Stuff series, which, yes, I know, I said I was going to upload uh, Episode 7 today. It's done and everything. I just got to upload it. Uh, I probably won't get a chance to because once I upload this, I got to head to bed because I got to get to work early tonight. So probably either tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon that'll be up. So... So basically how Thoughts and Stuff works is I choose a Netflix-based superhero TV show. So, uh, for instance, right now I'm doing my Thoughts and Stuff on Jessica Jones. And um, I watch one episode a week. And uh, after watching the episode, uh, I let you guys know what I thought of it. I go scene by scene. And if during the process of the episode I spot any Easter eggs, I let you guys know about those as well. And if you guys want to get a better grasp for this series, well, I urge you to uh, check out the playlist I put together for when I did my thoughts and stuff on Season 1 of Daredevil. And then if you like what you see there, you can check out the first six episodes of my thoughts and stuff on Jessica Jones. And speaking of Daredevil, uh, some hot news today. Uh, it's been announced that Season 2 of Daredevil will be starting in March. And I can't wait. And I think you guys know why, right? There's a, a little character popping up by the name of Frank Castle. So, uh, yeah, I can't wait to see what goes on in Season 2 of Daredevil. So, 
Yeah, so if you like everything that I just told you, awesome. Uh, and while looking around, make sure to comment on any video you like, because I love reading viewer comments. And also, like or dislike any video. Yes, I did say dislike, because let's face it, no one's perfect, right? And then, when all is said and done, before leaving, make sure to click that subscribe button. Alrighty, so that's it for now. So, the next time you'll be seeing me is most likely tomorrow when I upload... Uh, episode 7 of my thoughts and stuff, but also uh, I might record a uh, top 10 video, you know, like everyone's doing top 10 comics for 2016, or just top 10 in general, whether it be comics, toys, whatnot, and uh, I, I'm taking an idea from uh, a video Mercy did, uh, where instead of her top 10 comics that ended in 2015, she picked three. And I already picked three. I just got to record the video. So I think that that idea is actually cooler than 10 because it, it gives you more of a challenge. You know, you got to pick three books. So uh, I think that's pretty cool. So there's probably going to be a couple stuff coming, uh, a couple things I should say coming your way tomorrow and Saturday and everything. So anyway, so stay tuned and I will most likely see you guys tomorrow. Alrighty. So till then, this is Punisher 88 signing off. See ya.